James sat alone on a siding near the shed. He had run into two tar wagons and his bright red paint was covered in thick black tar. The fat controller had ordered him to be cleaned up at once, saying he was not fit to be seen. He was also thinking about his rudeness towards Toby, feeling he was now the dirty object. As he stood there, waiting for the cleaners to come, Edward puffed in. Go on, James fumed. You get your laugh out now and be done with it. I deserve it at this point. I'm not the sort of engine to laugh at one's misfortune, even if they do deserve it, said Edward. If I'm honest, the black on you right now makes me feel a little nostalgic. James gave Edward a look. How exactly? he asked. Well, it reminds me of when we first met, murmured Edward. When the Fat Controller brought you to the railway, you came in a rather different colour to what you are now. James looked at himself. He certainly did have memories of his first day on the railway. While Thomas was at Edward's station learning how to handle trucks, Edward was transferred to work in the yard for a spell. At first, Edward enjoyed the change of scene. However, as time went on and more goods were coming in, he was beginning to struggle keeping up with the workload. The Fat Controller noticed this and spoke kindly to him. You've done really well despite the circumstances, he said. I've decided to bring in another engine from the mainland to help you. Edward was very pleased with the news and wondered what the new engine would be like. He soon found out the following morning. As he was preparing for a morning's worth of shunting, he noticed an unfamiliar engine trundle into the yard. He had two small wheels in front and six driving wheels behind. He was also painted in a dark black paint. The Fat Controller soon arrived. I see you've met our new engine, he said. Edward, allow me to introduce you to James. He then told Edward to show James around the yard, and soon the two engines set to work. However, as Edward soon found out, James was rather dismissive of him, and he was rather a little full of himself. You don't need to tell me how to handle these filthy things, he told him. I don't need old timers like you bossing me about. Edward tried to not let it bother him, but as the day went on, it began to grate on him. His driver tried to soothe him. Don't let it get to you, old boy, he said. I think we can both tell his arrogance will get the better of him sooner or later. Edward sighed, and knowing that it'll land him in trouble, I can feel it in my frames. Early in the afternoon, the inspector came to see the two engines. There's a slow goods due to head out, he told the two engines. James, the fat controller, wants you to take it. James wasn't too keen. But sir, why do I have to take it? Edward should be the one to do it. Edward is needed here, said the inspector bluntly. Fat controller's orders. Now off you go, if you please. <laughs> James grumbled dreadfully as he arranged the slow goods. There were quite a lot of them to take. You'd better take care with that lot, Edward cautioned. They can get rather rowdy when pulled by an unfamiliar engine. All the more reason you should be taking them then, James huffed. But instead it has to be me. The guard's whistle blew and James snorted off. Edward watched him leave, sighed and went back to work. Now, what no one was aware of back then, James was one of those engines that was built with rather outdated brake blocks. Instead of metal, like most other engines, his ones were made out of wood, and throughout the morning and before he came to the line, he and his crew had been trying to hide the fact from everyone. James made good time despite the heavy load. He was trying to get the job over and done with as soon as possible, so hopefully he could pull something a little more pleasant as he put it. He soon reached Gordon's Hill and felt the drag of the trucks here. Oh, come on! Oh, come on! He snorted crossly. 
Steady Boy warned his driver, but James was too busy focusing on getting up the hill. Soon he reached the top and he started to coast down the other side. He suddenly realised that he was moving a lot faster than he thought. Oh no! he cried. Slow down! It was at that moment the truck saw their chance. Go on, go on! they yelled with a bump. They lurched James and before he knew it, he was out of control and speeding down the hill. Put the brake on! shouted the fireman. The driver reached for the handle and applied the brakes hard. Then it happened. There was a whoosh, and James felt a sudden burst of heat from his wheels. Looking down to his horror, his brakes were on fire. Oh no! he cried again. Help! His crew were trying everything they knew to regain control but it was no use. Then, a mile ahead, they saw a sharp bend, and the driver knew that they were going much too fast to make it around, and too fast to stop. We've got to jump for it, he shouted to the fireman. Now! Both men jumped out of the cab as James careered off the bend, broke through the fence and ploughed into the earth. Then there was silence. When James opened his eyes, he found himself tilted to one side and half of his front was buried in earth. Behind him, the trucks were piled in a heap with their loads strewn across the line and in front of him, staring right at him, was a cow. Ouch! he groaned feebly. After a moment, his crew, shaken but unhurt, made their way over to him and looked him all over to see if he was hurt. James looked down at himself ruefully, feeling very foolish. He began to wish he'd heeded Edward's warning. Never mind, James, said his driver. We always said those wooden brakes were no good. Meanwhile, the guard had begun to make his way back down the line to warn the signalman. But it turned out he didn't need to go too far, because he saw coming towards him the breakdown train, pushed by a certain small blue tank engine. Much later in the day, Edward was surprised to see James being pulled into the yard by Thomas. After Thomas left James on a siding, Edward pulled up alongside. Oh dear, he said, whatever happened to you? But before James could answer, the fat controller walked over. He told Edward to take James to the works to be mended in the morning. After he'd gone, the two engines were left alone and James soon broke the silence. I'm sorry I was rude, he said sadly. You were right all along about those trucks and I should have heeded your advice. That's all right, smiled Edward. A mistake anyone new can make. I'm sure the works will make you good as new tomorrow. Perhaps they might even give you a new colour. James looked at himself. Truth be told, he said quietly, I wish I had a colour that would make me stand out from the rest. A colour to really make one feel splendid. Edward thought, I would wonder what you'd look like in something like red. I've known many engines in my time that wore that sort of colour with grace and dignity. And with that, Edward went off to the sheds and James was left alone, with a lot to certainly think about. It certainly was an eventful first day for you, Edward chuckled. The cleaners who'd been working by this time were finishing up the job of cleaning the tar off James. Despite your little mishap, it seems old habits die hard for you. James looked down at his buffers. I suppose that's true, he said ruefully. 
Nonetheless, Edward continues, deep down, I know you try your best to be useful, and you still are to everyone. Only try to keep it in mind, and not let things get the better of you. And with that, Edward went back to work. James watched him go. He knew Edward was quite right. He also knew that he owed a certain tram engine an apology. But between you and me, we all know he'll still be the same splendid engine we've come to know. And I think we wouldn't have it any other way, would we?